Okay, people. It is July 11th. And I'm seriously crashing. Mm -hmm. So currently, I'm feeding Amari a little more than a half a banana. Because I'm not sure if bananas are constipating him or not. He's got two teaspoons of hemp seeds. Because <coughs> they're high in calories. <coughs> and they're an abundance of... They have an abundance of nutrients. And he's got... <coughs> a teaspoon or so or more of coconut butter. Mash that all up together. <coughs> and then a bunch of whipping cream. That's it. And he loves it. But, I don't know people. I keep thinking about what happened. I, I do, I feel like I was set up with that paramedic because by him doing what he did made it where I had abs absolutely no guardianship rights when it came to these doctors because if you notice the doctors did what they wanted to do and I don't like Whatever they were telling me was, like, in passing. It wasn't anything of, like, do you want this done? Or can we do this? Or it was, no, we're doing this, this, and this. Right? And this is the reason why we're doing it. I mean, what am I supposed to say? They were already doing it, people. Right? In terms of the antibiotic medication, the antiviral medication, from my understanding, he didn't need because he had no infections. <clears throat> uh, a sed a sed a, you know sedation initially because of the seizures. Then the seizure medication. So that's like four different medications they gave to him in two days. And there wasn't, there wouldn't have been anything I could have done. So if they wanted to give him ten medications, that's what I'm trying to say. They could have done it. They could have done it because they stripped me of my guardianship rights by calling the after hours because it was Sunday child protection services <coughs> to which now everybody all the nurses doctors everybody right you know <coughs> I'm under that microscope right casting judgment on me uh. Right? We know how that works. <coughs> so, now I've got the pediatrician texting Tisha saying bring him in tomorrow. And I'm like, why? Because we were told to take him to the family doctor in two weeks and then to the pediatrician. <clears throat> in a month. The only thing is everybody knows that the family doctor is <clears throat> just something in name. Nothing of substance outside of it's a file. It's not like the doctor cares. <laughs> right? 
but I guess it goes down to, well, at least some family doctor is better than no family doctor. But I feel like they're trying to cover up the family doctor's situation in terms of him telling me, take him to court because, you know, he doesn't want me to get information that is important when it relates to Shemay and Sierra. So, whether they're knowingly helping him by, well, you know, she doesn't have to take him now to the family doctor because he's seen the pediatrician, which is fine by me. Because, I don't know, there's this medication. I guess it was written for a year or something through uh, the hospital. But when TJ went to go get it filled out, the pharmacist was saying something only about two weeks. <clears throat> and they need to go see the family doctor before two weeks to get another prescription <clears throat> for whatever reason. So that could be why the pediatrician wants to see Amani. And plus, Tisha said, you know, it's his first seizure, right? What do you want? Oh, I'm just going to tell you the water's blowing. Okay, well, just put the water in my cup and you can make your own. Just be careful. <coughs> so the pediatrician can write the prescription because we're going to need one anyway. Now, anyway, I'm thinking about that letter. I know what computer I'm going to write it on. It's just a matter of sitting there and you don't know how it makes me feel. Though I get so depressed writing these letters, people. It falls on deaf ears. And so what? I write to the Minister of Health and send it to him by registered mail. What do you think? He'll just say, take it up with Fraser Health Authority and Andrew the Dragon. All right. They got what they wanted. Because when you look at it in terms of, well, you know, these repeat calls to CPS, Ministry of Children and Family Development, Child Protection, coming in with paramedics to boot yet. I mean, think about it. I, mean, I, just, I just feel like I was set up. You'll never do enough in this world, ever. Kind of having a pity party today because I've been planting food, right? And I've been like trying to stay positive with it, knowing in the back of my mind that that bitch is fucking cruising my yard, poisoning my plants. Okay, you think she's gonna stop people and going up on bitch shoot talking about how it's not in her character to be like that? Yeah, okay. We only got the bobby pins, the hand creams, and the tampons, and Freddie's bedroom where Shemay can find them. We only got the dog ashes in with freaking Lucky Charms that are supposed to be Julian's ashes in them as she gives them to, you know, people that she's supposedly supposed to care about and then two years later tells them that she lied. I mean, come on. You think, you know, it's not in her character? Yeah, it's in her character, people. So I'm like, don't, just can't worry, <laughs> right? You just can't worry because what she does is she sabotages things. When she's got her sights on somebody that she's stalking, she 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 tries to sabotage what's important to them. She tried to sabotage Shimei and Re Freddie's relationship when she planted that crap in his bedroom so that Shimei would find it and they'd fight and maybe break up so that she can go sleep with him and you know, you know how women are like that. Some women are just like that. Anyway, so I've been kind of depressed, right? Because. I would think, because she's still doing her little New Nations Unity tag in her fucking videos. In her boo-boo videos. 
her little 10, ten second shorts. She's tagging in New Nations Unity. <laughs> to remind me that she's still lurking. Lurking on YouTube and lurking my yard. <clears throat> Trying to figure out what plant she's going to kill next. <coughs> That's okay. These social workers know about this shit. That's for sure. So I guess that's some good news. Well, that's the only thing I can think of that... Oh. <coughs> <coughs> so, I'm thinking... <coughs> Why did Amari have the seizure? Well... We were at that birthday celebration, and it was probably a new experience for him. <coughs> Hold on a minute. It's hot and stuffy. I was outside. <laughs> I'm going to do something with potatoes, wondering if that girl's going to poison my potatoes. Serious. Right. <laughs> Just like those doctors. You know, just doing what they want. <coughs> I mean, what else did they do? Seriously, I don't know. I didn't get all the information. They were withholding me, withholding the information. Hey! They were giving me the least liminal amount of information. Anyway, I don't like doctors, period, people. I don't. Uh... Okay, so what was I saying? Oh, yeah. <coughs> he was being carried around by Tisha's brother to whom he didn't know. And not only that, but he was being carried around in an environment he'd never been in before he didn't know. So I think it overfired his brain. So I looked up what causes seizures, right? Anxiety, stress can do it. Apparently Tristan was talking really, really loud because he's a construction worker, and I guess it frightened Amari. So he brought him back to me, and oh, I didn't mean to frighten him, you know, it was my voice, oh. and I'm like, oh. yeah. so I think that could have been a trigger in terms of, because it's like when he goes to all these appointments and they're always taking off his clothes, and next thing you know it, he's got a phobia and won't let me put on his shirt or take off his shirt, and then I have to turn it into a game where, where's that hand, where's that hand? to calm him down so that I can actually take off his shirt or put a shirt on over the head that is right. <coughs> and that's instigated from going to these appointments so maybe maybe it was just too much between the environment in terms of an open space with all the people and the noises and because he internalizes sounds different than us right I mean, if he would have been doing it more often, then it would be different, but it was new. And then to have basically a stranger, even though he's, you know, not a stranger, but for Amari, it would be a stranger. Didn't even cross my mind, people. Didn't even dawn on it. Carrying him around. Oh, maybe it was just too much. And that's that was the stress factor that created the anxiety that triggered the seizure. But, after it was all said and done, like I said, he was a completely different kid in terms of, well, when you get in the bath, and he just laughing and just, it was like, 
something released itself in his in his brain. <coughs> it was a new it was a reset, right? Almost like a reset. And he's been good. He's been good. Right? He's been happy. And very communicative and you know, he's getting again stronger and cheeky. So, I'm thinking to set up some water drums here, because <coughs> I have them, <coughs> I just don't have them full, but you know, I'm under pressure, right, in terms of just everything I have to do in a day, I still have to do the basement, that's ticking, we've got court coming up, and I haven't read anything as if I can see anything, right, and I'm like, I crashed, Right, last couple of days I've been just planting food, getting sick to my stomach, knowing what's roaming my yard, people. Okay, I'm planting food, getting sick to my stomach, knowing what is roaming my yard, taunting my house. Taunting. As she's trying to act all innocent with her 10 second little videos as she's tagging New Nations Unity. Like, the girl is sick. That violet tree that she killed, that fed the monarch butterflies, it fed the bumblebees, the honeybees, it fed the hummingbirds. Like, she literally starved out a whole bunch of animals because, and insects, okay? Birds, right? Because there's not that many of those kinds of trees around anymore. Because you have to remember, these property developers are just going around gutting property after property, killing off the indigenous plants like that, because that came from over there before they tore down everything from over there. Okay? You don't find these kind of plants that much anymore. Because they're all being wiped out. And this thing thinks it's funny people and then has the audacity to say it's not in my character to be like that <laughs> yeah okay we know exactly what happened to Shimei people we know exactly what happened to Shimei and how it happened anyway I'm trying to stay positive, but it's kind of hard to do that when you're depressed. For whatever reason I'm depressed, I'm depressed. <coughs> well, you did that on purpose. I'm putting this on him and he's just pushing it off. And then he looks up at me and he smiles. Now you think it's a tug, tug of war? Is it a tug of war? Leave it on. Leave it on. There, just leave it. Anyway, I am just gonna, I think I'm just gonna leave this video short. I wasn't gonna make any videos for a while. I was just trying. I'm really trying hard just to stay focused. You know. I'm going to try something different with these potatoes. It's kind of late in the game to be planting potatoes, but I bought them from, you know, the grocery store. They're organic. They're, uh, they were $8 a bag or something stupid like that. I bought two bags. So I'm going to put them in cardboard boxes with peat moss and a bit of dirt with grass on top. I'm going to leave them on my porch. As if they'll be safe. As if they'll be safe on my porch, people. You see, that's the thing. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't even worry about it. But under the circumstances that I live under, you don't think I don't think about it every fucking day?
But I'm going to do it anyway. You can't be afraid to live your life because you've got 26-year-old lunatics roaming the neighborhood. It's a mental defect that's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse as that individual ages. Mm -hmm. like, who does that? And then say it's out of character. <laughs> yeah, okay. <sighs> That's like coming in with some cocky Mamie story that the only reason you didn't give back Shemay's cell phone, even though she just had a C-section, and your brother or her brother was beating on Shemay as they're switching over, taking off Shemay's name from the birth certificate, right? Demanding that she pays rent, even though she was only supposed to be there for a few days while the rooms downstairs were being shifted, you know, switched around, right? And then when Shemay's saying, give me back my phone, as you're trying to kidnap, as she's trying to kidnap the baby, and then she's getting up on YouTube talking about, well, I didn't give back the cell phone because Shemay came over to my mother's house five days after, or six days, or whatever it was, after the baby was born, and asked me to borrow $50 so she could go high and go party. Yeah, okay. Like, just, that's what I mean. Like, fucking stupid. Fucking stupid. So stupid. Yeah, starving out the monarch butterfly, starving out the hummingbirds, starving out the honeybees, starving out the wild bees, and all those other little creatures that fly around and like to feed on violets as the violets are being destroyed by the property developers. So if you're not getting it from the property developers, you're getting it from the lunatics in the neighborhood. Okay. As I'm going from spot to spot thinking, is this bitch going to show up and kill that, poison that? What is she going to do? What is she going to do next, people? Hmm? And it's simply just don't talk about her, okay? Because then she wins. in terms of she'll never be held to account. But you see, there's going to be a day I'm going to die. And when I die, she's going to be calling up social services. Right? I want to see Amari. My family wants to see Amari. And social services will be saying, well, hold on a minute. We got a long list of shit here. And we got documentation, too. It ain't happening. So for all her effort, it's not getting her anywhere in life. Uh -uh. Because that is definitely one stranger that Amari should never be around. Mm. How about that?